G'day and welcome to the Jade Rat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, today we are going to do a unboxing, sort of first impressions, and we'll see how the uh, Koi, or Sakura Koi watercolors, and this is in the uh, 24 pack. I bought this a while back actually, and I haven't been able to uh, open it and see how it goes. So we'll do that today. So first up, we've got, um, these are made in, made in China, but by a Japanese company. And we've got all of the colors here that we are looking at. It comes with a water brush and a sort of travel palette, I believe. Uh, yep, because it's a pocket field sketchbook. So it, it's designed to uh, be carried around. And it's got instructions here in uh, French and Spanish as well as English. So to open it, um, and they say fine quality transparent watercolors, ideal for plain air painting, so painting outside. And this is how it goes. So that's the box. This is the tin. So it's about there we go. So that's how big it is. Uh, 25. So about an inch and uh, 11 and a half centimeters and then 16 or so so cracking it open and it's got like these little grooves here i don't know if you can see that there we are and cracking it open we've got a well a fire well but three small and two sort of larger ones and this is it's got little legs so I'm gonna prop it up presumably like this um, and like that and then we've got our colors two sponges and the water brush So it comes with the uh, brush and comes with the brush and barrel separate. Um, and I think there we are. Okay, finally got it in. I had to read the instructions. Okay, this isn't filled with water, but that is the tip that we can see. And it's it's pretty soft. Um, it's about the same as A brush like this again quite soft uh, synthetic bristles it's a little bit more of a bullet point sort of brush um, and what we'll do is we'll come back and do some swatches
So now that we've had that sort of kerfuffle out of the way, um, this is the second lot of swatches that we've been doing. The um, first lot, as you know, used a, a marker that was not waterproof. Uh, it did bleed through. So here we are. And the black portion that's been rather uh, ruggedly done is actually ink, drawing ink. So it is a um, little bit uh, diluted. But still, you can see the transparencies uh, when we do the swatches. The one that I really noticed a lot of uh, opacity in was the uh, John, John, I don't know how to pronounce that, John Brilliant color. It's sort of that uh, corally color that you see in the top row. And that was um, quite... Yeah, transparent and you see it when it's dry as well uh, you can see the uh, sort of creaminess that milky texture coming through a lot similarly with a permanent green pale and um, even viridian hue is quite uh, opaque comparatively the blues uh, I cerulean blue was a bit opaque but um, Prussian and ultramarine deep were were great they had a sort of really nice glazing capability and the prussian blue also granulates quite well i think um compared to uh, other paints I'm trying to think compared to the white knights or um nevskaya palitra leningrad paints uh, these ones tend to granulate a little bit more especially in the um, grey, uh, amber and of course the blues. The yellow is not so much uh, and there's a little bit in the cadmium red uh, that granulates but other than that nothing too, um, too crazy there. Some other colours that are pretty opaque are uh, Chinese white. You can see a little bit of that coming through as well as uh, lemon yellow and yellow ochre as well and I think that's largely because there's a slight bit of um, white pigmentation in it but the colors on their own look really nice and I think they present a really good uh, mixing area mixing aptitude I just tried to think of a word <laughs> And I was just forgotten everything. But now we're moving on to the painting. So you've seen me here do the background. And we're getting on to the skin. And if you can sort of recognize this, this is taken from a still from a movie. Um, where there's a rather famous sword involved. Um, but the hand itself is... Uh, masked off initially and you can see that the little yellow areas with winds at newton's masking fluid that's the um the only masking fluid i have ever used and uh it's really good i like it yeah uh, just as long as you don't keep it on for too long uh, it will sort of catch on to the paper especially if you have lower quality paper it will stick on a little bit more when you're in the you know later stages of the painting and you haven't taken it off in a week or two but um yeah so this painting is a still from a movie uh it's called king arthur legend of the sword came out a while ago um i can't remember the year exactly maybe 2016 14 a few years now um and what this is 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 taken a, a screen grab i suppose screenshot of the movie and it's kind of been tilted a little bit the uh, of course in the frame it's a lot wider here i've done it on sort of a portrait angle but um 
otherwise it's sort of a bit cropped out i wanted to get the sword that metallic sort of look as well as the skin uh, maybe i should also bear in mind the time when i paint but you know it's easy to forget what you're doing So this painting is done on 300 GSM watercolour paper by Derivan, an Australian owned company. Um, and this is an acid free medium texture paper. Yes, we got the lighting back up um, after the darkness of the sunset. <laughs> and uh, it's sort of designed for watercolour primarily, but also acrylic gouache and mixed media. So. Um, it's kind of good. It's a bit heavier. It's a bit thicker than um, other sort of G 300 GSM papers. And I like it for things where you need to do lots of layers. And that's how, uh, as you can see, we're painting through. That's how I like to do the paintings. I'm not um, a very strong drawer. Draw drawer. Why did that sound weird? It sounded like drawers. Um, yeah, so I'm not very good with the sort of initial sketches. So a lot of the form and the shapes are based up of, up of the layers and the values. So we, we sort of build it up as we go. And thicker paper is, of course, much better for this because it, it can handle it a lot more. It can handle re-wetting and glazing over and over again till you get that sort of saturation that you're looking for. Um, so, of course, the paints are Sakura Koi, but the brushes that I use, the, the big... Um, and I've got it here sitting with me. That big purple handle brush, the angled one, is a one inch or 25 millimeter Moderna M77A uh, brush by Royal and Langnickel. Lang, Lang, Langnickel. Again, strange word, but um, yep. And the red handle brush, that is a little bit like a round uh, brush, is the Neef. A 244 imitation sable round brush in size 6 and later on when we get into the details uh, I use a Holcroft series 3001R select filament also in round and that is also in the size 6 but it's a little bit smaller um, so I've removed the masking tape here and I'm sort of blending out that extreme white highlight left by the paper so we're going through and softening those edges and making the contrast between the background and the hand a lot stronger so getting the creases where the fingers are and where the light hits making that really obvious putting a bit of shadow where the uh, last two fingers are the um, ring and the pinky just to push it further into the background and of course you'll see um, here I'm mixing up a mixture of blues purples and a little bit of earth tones um, to create this really strong dark background I really like getting um, that background edge sort of done in a wider brush I think it means that you don't have to um, concentrate too much on the details in the background you can just go over it in one go and create some sort of rough shapes but nothing to um, distract from the main main object I suppose in the in the painting itself we're also going on to do uh, the straps of the the sword um, that I did try to follow from reference but there was one point where I uh, sort of thought I would wing it and there's a little bit of mismatch between the strings, uh, the, the wrapping around the handle. Um, what else are we doing here? Remo removing the... I can't talk today. It's Sunday afternoon. 
my brain has fried um but removing the last of the highlights that were on the sword and really deepening that um metally sword color uh, we've got the tiny little patterns there on the sword blade itself slightly taken from reference slightly gone off um yeah as a intuitive process and just making again that highlight pop out a little bit more and we're done that's it for uh the sakura koi uh, painting a demo as you can see so there's a couple of areas in the hand that's a little bit more opaque than others and that's where we use that John brilliant in our mix and you can see that that opaque sort of solid saturated color comes through especially near the knuckles you can see there in the shadows whereas other parts of the fingers and the hand is a little bit more glazed um, I really like that uh, opportunity to pick where you want to glaze and where you want it to, to be a bit more uh, deeper. And that's it um, for Sakura Koi. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that's it pretty much. Have a good one.